Welcome to Shelf Life, the monthly series where I look at games I covered about half a year ago and let you know whether they're still in my collection. And this will be a fun one. We're looking back to near the beginning of this year to February of 2023. And I've got one crowdfunding game and seven retail releases, many of which I got review copies for. So let's check them out and see which ones had Shelf Life. So first in our crowdfunding corner, we have one game, Encounters Shattered Waste. And this is a quick playing JRPG inspired boss battler. So it's kind of already hitting on all cylinders for my likes. I enjoyed uh, the class variety in this one, the ability variety and the boss variety, like lots of things to play around with. It's quick to play, co-op and solo work pretty well. So this is one that I think I probably would have backed, but they did offer me a review copy and I took them up on it. So I am looking forward to playing more of it. Will it be a long-term keeper in my collection? I guess that depends on how much my kids like it and how uh, quickly the play keeps on going. <laughs> and if I can win on the hardest difficulty set, Settings. But uh, yeah, I definitely enjoyed what I saw so far and want to play it more. That's Encounters Shattered Waste. But now let's get over to our release games and see which of them stuck around. So first we have Starship Captains, a solo competitive Euro versus Super Skill Pinball Ramp It Up, which is I think the second or third game in the series. And starting with Starship Captains, I found this a pretty uh, light and breezy Euro. My family enjoyed it pretty well. The art is super charming. The theme hasn't come through that well, though, and the game does kind of feel like it ends just when it's getting interesting. But I don't like uh, solo Euro experiences that often. That's pretty hit or miss for me. And this one was just okay. So it didn't last the long haul. This is a call. But then coming to Ramp It Up, the Super Skill Pinball set, this was my favorite of the three. That's right, I did a three like kind of combo review with this one, the Christmas one, and the Star Trek one. I guess the Star Trek one would have been a better direct comparison to Starship Captains. And I thought by and large, these new tables were really fun. I still really enjoy the uh, roll and write-ish uh, modes that Super Skills Pinball has in the series. I think it's like one of the best thematic uses of roll and write. I think the only table I found a little weird was the top speed racing one, but all the rest were solid. So actually, this is the only super skill pinball I still own at this point. <laughs> I have called all the rest. So that means the super skill pinball wins out over Starship Captains. All right, next we have a very odd pairing indeed. Hoplomachus Remastered, the tactical uh, solo cooperative and competitive combat game versus Tiwanaku, the competitive solo or cooperative deduction game. So hey, maybe they're not that different. They're both trying to hit all the game modes. Uh, starting with Hoplomachus Remastered, uh, if you look at my review, I thought this one was really good for competitive. I loved one of the two solo co-op modes where you are trying to survive like through kind of like a gauntlet, but the ones where you're fighting a uh, titan, like kind of a big boss, I found pretty poorly balanced for my taste, and I did not enjoy it much at all. It's been uh, the most negative thing I played out of the new Hoplomachus stuff. Not that it's like terrible, but it's just not as good as the rest. So I will say that Hoplomachus Marcus Remastered is very close to getting called. I'm kind of holding on to it until the uh, new like Pandora stuff ships to see if that fixes it for me. But I do kind of think that while I might keep Victorum Remastered is probably not going to stay in my collection forever. And then going to Tiwanaku, this is a beautiful game. I like uh, cooperative and solo deduction games. I don't know if I actually ever played it competitive, but the solo and co-op worked pretty well. The co-op, like the game, uh, the way that it does logic is a little hard to explain. So it was a bit tough to get other people to play it with me, although my son did eventually get it. Uh, this is the coolest part, what's on the screen right now. The, oh, they, they went away. <laughs> but the the little uh, like dial thing that they somehow made uh, work correctly to show you like what you see in its spot. It is such a cool like mechanical marvel. It reminds me of a Turing machine that also did like deduction with a really cool mechanical thing. There we go there. Hey, look how cool was that? Um, <laughs> so that has a fun toy element. But besides that, this is not better than other uh, solo co-op deduction games that I already have in my collection. Like this is never going to be Paint the Roses for me, for example, or even something simple like Hanabi. So it's definitely cool. I really respect the design. It's a beautiful game. But this one was a call and Hoplo might be a call. But for now, it's sticking around and I guess it's the winner. And then for our final matchup, we've got a three way showdown. Reckland Run, Keep the Heroes Out and a Deck of Wonders. Starting with Reckland Run, this one has a theme I love. It's a sort of Mad Max-ish uh, game where you're trying to drive your car while shooting others. It's got some interesting uh, dice mitigation and dice placement mechanics and like kind of uh, upgrading and kitting out your car. Uh, it's not as good in the solo series that it's a part of as uh, something like Warp's Edge <laughs> for me, like not even close, but I still enjoyed it pretty well. But still, in the end, it was a call. 
Next is Keep the Heroes Out, which is a solo and co-op with like a sort of tacked on competitive mode. Don't play that. A game where you are controlling these adorable little monster meeples, trying to stop these heroes from rampaging through your uh, dungeon. It's got a little bit of deck building. That's definitely not the game's strongest point. But the overall tactics and charm of the game, the variety in the scenarios uh, is really good. The biggest negative I have with the game is that the difficulty balancing is like terrible. <laughs> like the easy mode is way too easy and the hard mode is way too hard. And there's already been like multiple variants to try to fix it none of them i think have worked super well but the upcoming expansion totally revamps it in a way that seems great where like you always draw the same number of cards each round you're just going to change up the deck to make it a little bit easier or harder so i think i'm going to keep the game my kids really like it i think i'm going to get the expansion and that should give the game even more variety which is already great and make uh, a good game even better so yes this is a keep for now keep the heroes out and then last one on the list, Deck of Wonders. This is one that I did a preview of, and I enjoyed it during the preview. It had kind of the feel of uh, Magic the Gathering, but in solo. Although I will say this game was done no favors by uh, Ashes Reborn, Red Reigns, and Sky Tear Horde both coming, because I like those uh, both a lot better for sort of the Magic the Gathering-ish uh, kind of play. And this one is very interesting. Um, I ended up kind of negative on it overall. It has this cool mechanic where you're playing from the same deck for like the enemy and you, but kind of the way they use the cards is better. And then there was like some deck construction. So trying to uh, set up the cards that you would have combos and like they wouldn't. There's some neat things there. There was some nice variety in the bosses, uh, but things that I didn't like it. It was really quick. It's like 10 minutes to play maybe, but it was so heavily weighted towards loss, like something like 80 to 90% of the time you're going to lose. And you were sort of supposed to like keep on playing and playing and trying different combos until like eventually you would like level up and then kind of progress through this campaign that would unlock stuff. So I found that very frustrating. It was so like top decky and random random to the point of irritation and they had also had like a tacked on legacy element where you could like draw on the cards or put stickers on the cards i hate all that kind of stuff so yeah this uh one definitely went down way uh, lower in my estimation once i played it more i think people who really like deck construction and combos and really like quick micro games might enjoy it more but not a strong recommend for me so this one was a call and that means keep the heroes out is the winner of the group of three so there you go, one crowdfunding game that I probably would have backed if they didn't offer a review copy, and three out of seven retail games kept. Not uh, too bad for this crop. And getting to the contest, let's see how everyone did in group one. Super Skull Pinball, very confident. 77% of you said I would keep that, while Starship Captains only got 23%. And that's going to be kind of the name of the game this time, because in group two, Hoplomachus Remastered got 84%, and Tiwanaku only 16%. And even in group three, when there were three choices, uh, still 71% of you got it right with Keep the Heroes Out. 18% said Reckland Run, and only 11% said Deck of Wonders. And as you might imagine with those numbers, we have a ton of uh, potential winners. The names at the top are the ones who got it right but didn't want to be entered in the contest. The ones in yellow are our Patreon supporters who get double entries. I'm going to roll a D4 and then a D20 to narrow it down. First, the D20 is a 3, and then the D4 is a 2. Which means that Carlos Arce is our winner for this month. I'll be in touch about which game you want. Uh, thanks to everybody else. And don't forget, if you check the video description, there's the entry for next month. You can get your guesses in early. Good gaming, everybody, and we'll see you at the next stop.